Hey guys, my name is Minas. Today we're going to be talking about the embryological development of the ear. This is part one of three. This video we're going to be focusing on the inner ear. And as usual, we're going to be breaking it down so simply so that if you have no idea about ear embryology or even embryology in general, you should be able to know what's going on. And we're going to begin right at the beginning at the blastula. The blastula is the result of fertilization where we have a sperm fertilizing an egg. That combination travels down the uterine tube into the uterine canal, implants into the uterine wall, and a process of gastrulation will form three germ layers. Ectoderm in blue, mesoderm in red, endoderm in green, and these are color coded. So what do these become? This is an oversimplification for all of these, essentially, where this is a cross section and we're looking up at the fetus. In blue, we have the ectoderm, which will become skin and nervous system tissue. In red, we have the mesoderm, which become lots of things and they have three parts. The paraxial mesoderm, which becomes somites and muscles. The intermediate mesoderm, which becomes gonads and kidneys. And we have the lateral plate mesoderm, and there are two, the parietal and the visceral. And as we can see, uh, if we focus on the ectoderm, it pinches off forming the neural tube and that will eventually become the spine. And the mesoderm will surround all of the internal organs forming the uh, peritoneal pleura and all of that stuff. And then in, in green we have the endoderm which will become a gut tube, the endothelial lining. Okay, that's an oversimplification and a quick introduction to embryology. Okay, so let's talk about the development of the inner ear. The inner ear is the part of the ear that takes all of the information from the middle ear, from those bones, and it converts them into nerve impulses sent to the brain, which we will interpret as sound. Okay, and if your exam is in the next 15 minutes and you want to quickly find out what the inner ear comes from without going through full understanding, let's quickly go over an outline. So the inner ear, First, we have an otic placode coming from ectoderm. It will pinch off, becoming an otic vesicle. The otic vesicle has two parts. It has the uh, dorsal portion or the utricular portion or the saccular or ventral portion. And they are in two main parts. So the ventral, the, the ventral portion will actually become the saccule and the cochlear duct. And then the dorsal portion will become the semicircular canals and the utricle and the endolymphatic uh, duct. That's it. All right, so if now let's get into a deeper understanding of the inner ear. So if we just start at the beginning, the outer ear. The outer ear is the collector of the sound. It takes in all of the noise that you make and it brings it into the ear. It feeds it into the middle ear. The middle ear is the conducting system. It's bones that vibrate with each other, taking in the collected sound, sending it to the inner ear. The inner ear, again, it trans transports uh, it into a nerve, to the brain. Okay, so let's first look back over here. When I pointed to it earlier, it probably looked like an alien, but this is just a cross section of this if we only focus on this and this is pretty small so let's just bring it out there um, we have the optic vesicle here from a previous video where we spoke about the embryology of the eye don't confuse that with the otic vesicle the otic vesicle is essentially where the ear is coming from okay so this uh, is obviously the embryo and we're gonna cut it this way through the otic vesicle and if we cut it and look at it this way, this is what we'll have. So over here is ectoderm in uh, blue, and we'll notice that the first sign of any E development is actually a thickening of this ectoderm, which is called the otic placode. And of course, we have the notochord here, the dorsal aorta, which will eventually fuse, and then the pharynx here, which is from endoderm, and that's around day 22. So we have a few snapshots in time. Day 22, 24, 27, and 32. So we notice that the otic placode will invaginate. That means it will dig in. So this uh, will go in and eventually 
form a pit which will pinch off becoming the otic vesicle. Some cells of the otic vesicle will also move away from the vesicle and it will become the statoacoustin ganglion. What's that? There are two. The statoacoustic ganglion will eventually form both the vesti vesticular, vestibular and the cochlear ganglions of the cranial nerve 8, vestibular cochlear nerve, CNV3, so CN8. We will see over here the a tuba, tubotympanic recess in the pharynx and all you'll need to know is that essentially the otic placode will thicken, invaginate, it becomes an otic pit and an otic vesicle is formed. All the rest of these drawings here is from this circle. So this otic vesicle will differentiate into two main parts. Let's focus our attention here. This is the otic vesicle. It's differentiated a little bit. We'll notice at the top here an endolymphatic sac and the duct. And there are two main portions which are the focus of the rest of the video. The dorsal portion and the ventral portion. The dorsal portion is a atricular portion and the ventral portion is the saccular portion. Let's first talk about the saccular portion, the ventral portion. So we were only going to focus now on these three. In week six, you'll form the saccule. It's an outgrowth of this part. So the dorsal, uh, sorry, the ventral portion is growing, forming a saccule. And surrounding this saccule is undifferentiated tissue. This undifferentiated tissue will eventually form the cartilage surrounding all of the inner ear. So what happens between week six to week eight is that the saccule will, the, well, the tubular outgrowth of the saccule will form a coil. It continues to dig into this mesenchyme that we just spoke about forming a coil. And by week eight, you'll have two and a half coils and the cochlear duct is formed. So the cochlear duct is formed from a tubular outgrowth of the saccule from week six and is completed by week eight where you'll have two and a half turns of the cochlear duct. That is essentially how the cochlear duct is formed. And we'll have the saccule over here which contains sensory cells. This connection between the cochlear duct and the saccule was called the ductus reunions. So now let's talk about the dorsal growth of the otic vesicle, where we spoke about the ventral being the cochlear duct as well as the saccule. The dorsal part will become the semicircular canals. So, step one, step two, step three. Over here in week five, we have a growth. This is the utricle, and this is the growth of the future semicircular canals. There are initially walls that grow as the tissue is growing. These walls are next to each other. They are close to each other and it's all tissue. And by week eight, these walls will vacuolize, which means the cells will die forming a pit or a hole right here. So essentially what you're left with is, but from week five where you have just a wall of tissue and then three walls of tissue that are next to each other, you'll have three semicircular canals the superior semicircular canal, posterior semicircular canal, and the lateral semicircular canal. This bit here, which is a dilatation of part of the semicircular canal, is called the cruz ampullare, and it contains 
the sensory cells for equilibrium because the ear doesn't only hear things, it will also control, well, the inner ear controls or is responsible for equilibrium, so balance. Okay, now let's talk about the cochlear duct and the sensory component of the inner ear. How does that develop? Remember how we said over here that there are cartilage that this grows into, that the cochlear duct grows into. That cartilage I've drawn here in red, in dots. So we have this cochlear duct on the inside, so we're looking inside this right now. We've cut it somewhere and we're looking at it. So here we have the cochlear duct and the cells of the cochlear duct are initially not differentiated. They are random cells waiting to have a role. So in this stage, we have the basement membrane, but none of these cells are actually differentiated into anything. By week 10, we have some differentiation happening. We have the some of the epithelial cells of the cochlear duct forming two main components. The first one is the outer ridge. And the outer ridge is responsible or gives rise to the hair cells. The hair cells are the sensory cells. And we have the inner ridge, which will eventually become the spiral limbus. On top of this outer ridge and inner ridge is the tectorial membrane. And together, this will eventually form the organ of corti. So by week 10, we have this. And if we look at this further developed segment, you'll notice that there are the outer ridge has formed hair cells. There is an outer hair cell layer, which has up to three or four rows, and then the inner hair cell layer, which has one row. And the tectorial membrane is touching the hair cells. So the tectorial membrane and the hair cells are the organ of corti. Okay, this bottom layer of cochlear duct epithelial cells will become the basilar membrane. And this cells up here, which are undifferentiated, will become the vestibular membrane. On the top, on this cartilage over here, eventually, initially it's just a whole block of tissue. Cell death or vacuolization of this cartilage will form holes, which eventually become the scalar vestibular. And the bottom bit will become the scalar tympani. Okay, so now at this moment, we have two main pathways because of cell death from cartilage, connecting the surrounding tissue to the rest of it is the spiral ligament. Over here, connected to the hair cells, we have the spiral ganglion, which are the ganglion that will eventually feed off into the cranial nerve 8, vestibular cochlear nerve. So all of the sound fed into the inner ear is converted through here into by the organ of corti and sent to the nerves. Okay, let's have a closer look of the organ of corti. This over here are the undifferentiated cells and in blue we have the first diff sign of the hair cells. Those are going to be the sensory cells. And this is just in the newborn, what the organ of corti looks like. You have your three or four layers of outer hair cells and a single layer of inner hair cells. And that is the sensory function of the inner ear. So that's pretty much embryology of the inner ear in a super easy to understand way. I've broken down all of the concepts so that anyone new should have understood everything. If you don't, leave a comment. I'll try and answer the question. I think I usually just sit down every month. I probably sit down at a desk 
and I'm answering comments for an hour or something like that. So I try and I read all the comments and I try and reply to every single one of them. I answer all of the Instagram and Facebook messages as well. Um, if you want the background, if you want this image in high quality, you can join my Patreon page. It's a good way to support as well as getting something out of it. Um, I give all of the Patreon supporters as much attention as they want. You can message me as long as you want and I'll always answer all of your questions and support you through your exams and all that stuff. There's different tiers, but you know what? It doesn't really matter. Join whatever tier. I'm more than happy to have a chat with you if you want to. Um, I've started a website as well, drminas.com. It's completely bare and there's nothing on it. But the point of making that website is to try and get everyone together to talk about embryology, ask questions, and I'll even answer questions as well. I'll try and slowly post stuff up as I um, go along as well. Cool. So nice to see everyone. Thanks so much. Much appreciated. All the best. Bye.